distinguished Vice President to Dr. Field, distinguished Dr. Murphy, distinguished Dr. Karmula, distinguished fellow and staff of the University of Findlay, and the ladies and gentlemen, including Kake Group students. Well, it gives me great pleasure to be here with the University of Findlay community today. Many times speaker may say this as a matter of courtesy. However, I am truly honored to be here. I am truly honored to be here as last August I couldn't even have imagined being here in Ohio or much less have imagined the privilege of uh, visiting the University of Finlay. No other. This past April, I would become an educator at the Chiba Institute of Science and have the pleasure to watch and assist the next generation who, who, who will bear responsibility for the future as they diligently study daily, grow and progress into productive members of society. Observing the, them as they advance give me true pleasure to great happiness, which is why I feel so privileged to be here at the University of Findlay, which was the inspiration for the establishment of the Chiba Institute of Science, and to meet with her students and hear their thoughts and opinions as well as to observe their studies, all of which I will bring back with me to the Chiba Institute of Science and share with our students. Let me begin with a brief self-introduction in already by where the president uh, nicely introduced me. My name is Shozo Azuma. My family name, Azuma, is written in the kanji, or Chinese character that means East. My first name, Shozo, is a compound character comprised of two characters. Sho means auspicious or good fortune, and zo, zo meaning three. So in short, I am here today to bring three good fortunes from the East. <laughs> I'm not proud of the fact that prior to entering university, I did not study very diligently. However, I was actively engaged in extracurricular activities. I played baseball and was a member of the brass band in the music area. It wasn't until after I entered university that I seriously thought about what I wanted to do for my future. For time's sake, I will abbreviate some of the details after completion of my master degree and doctorate degree course. I worked for the United Nations and was based in Vienna, Austria, and thereafter Geneva, Switzerland, and assisted the refugees from various countries worldwide. After which I ran for office and service in the Japanese National Parliament, often referred to as the Diet, for nearly 20 years. From this part April, I became an academic when I joined the Faculty of Risk and Crisis Management at the Chiba Institute of Science. Many things have changed since uh, I was a student, the problems facing two nations have also changed greatly since I was a student. Even though we come from different generations and different cultures, it is my sincere hope that we will, through this meeting, be able to recognize and value the many commonalities we share. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the author of the art of war, the great Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu stated that if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need for fear the result of a hundred battles. From India, Shida Ruma Gautama, who you may know better as the Buddha, once said, and I'm paraframing this, 
do what you believe to be right and do what is good for others. These are two of my favorite principles which I, I often draw on. Sun Tzu saying is often misunderstood. He is not saying that knowing or understanding others or other co countries as well as knowing yourself and your country will ensure victory over them, but that you will not lose to that conflict. And Buddha is saying that you should not blindly follow the instruction of others, nor blame others for your actions, but you should find your own path and take responsibility for your own actions. These are words spoken thousands of years ago. However, today many individuals throughout the world have been inspired by these great philosophers' words and try to apply these principles into their lives. In other words, I believe that this broad appeal illustrates that the true essence of human transcends oceans, body time, occupation, location, nationality, language, clan, culture, history, skin, color, or even which time period one lives. I believe that true character remains constant. The time we currently live in is quite different from that of the past. Even from the time I was born in the 1950s, what makes this time so uniquely different? It is the rapid advancement of technology that has greatly improved the speed and ease of travel and communications. As a result, events in any parts of the globe can instantaneously make known worldwide. For example, terrorist attack of 9-11 and the greatest earthquake and tsunami of March 11 were broadcast live throughout the world. This rapid development of travel and communication has made the overall relationship between nations much more intimate, especially in the fields of economy and finance which has pushed the advance of globalization. However, this advancement towards globalization, I don't believe has been the unifying force many believe it to be. Many of you may have read already The End of History and the Last Man by the famous American political scientist Francis Fukuyama. In his book, he argues that we may be entering the end of history by the universalization of Western liberal democracy as the final form of human government. However, several years after the publishing of The End of History and the Last Man, Francis Fukuyama's teacher and mentor, the influential American political scientist, Dr. Samuel P. Huntington, published a widely renowned book, The Crash of Civilization, which contradicts many of the premises of globalization. I believe the coming era will be a cycle of constant integration and division. Those of you studying the natural sciences may readily understand my argument. Uh, there are many examples of different entities that will naturally join together. However, once joined, various other forces begin to apply pressure to separate them. From my time as a politician, I can draw, my, I can draw many examples that commonly occur, such as the tendency to form large coalition, which enables the coalition to have great influence. However, the larger the coalition becomes, the more common it is for fractions to develop. This often results in a new coalition. I'm sure that in your daily life, you come across individuals that are always comparing themselves to other competing with and ranking those around them to establish cliques. This is best illustrated by the common phrase, I'm not like them. Perhaps we could call this human instinct. Of course, 
if all individuals are harmoniously joined by a common purpose, there is great strength and vitality. In other words, in the world today, we have many dissimilar individuals coming together, form societies that must face and interact with the other similar societies. Why, which is why I believe one of the most important issues facing the 21st century is to somehow find ways to mitigate the risks of potential conflict. I believe one of the ways to accomplish this is through my area of research, risk and crisis management. We live in a perilous time. Looking back in, in history, there are many similarities to our time and past world calamities. If we are unable to appropriately address these dangers, I believe we are headed for another catastrophe. This includes natural disasters such as earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, flood, as well as man-made disasters such as terrorism, cyber attacks, and war. In addition, if a financial crisis were to hit in China or Japan, the adverse effects will not be limited to those two countries, but would directly and indirect impact nation worldwide and cause great suffering. In the near future, if the international community does not come to a consensus, once local outbreaks of contagious disease risk becoming pandemic, one only need to look at the recent Ebola outbreaks. One, one also must remember, while it is not a pleasant thought, there are those who look at such calamities and their aftermath not is a disaster, but simply an opportunity to profit. We should not ignore these potential disasters, believing that they are the concern of other nations or individuals. I hope that realize that disaster are all of our problems, and then systems can be developed and enacted that will not only help domestically but internationally when the needs arises. In conclusion, during my research here to the United, Nation, United States, and specifically to the University of Finlay this month, I believe I was able to find some interesting differences in the American approach and the Japanese approach. Due to Japanese history and its many instances of natural disaster, such as earthquake and tsunami, I believe that they have established one of the best systems to limit damage or loss of life in the event of a natural disaster. However, one area where I believe Japan seriously lags behind the United States is in the event of a crisis, especially based on man-made incident. I believe that America model, American model of incident commander or crisis manager who are empowered with the authority and the responsibility make quick and timely decisions. But more important, America has individuals with the character that enables them to make these decisions, both of which I believe Japan currently lacks. In the future, I hope to look into this issue much more thoroughly. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.